am a 33 year old woman with no direction in life and I want to talk about it. I was gonna get married. I got married and then divorced. I wanted a big career. I started having a nice, okay career and then that pummeled. I no longer know what I want, even though I've planned this life since I was really young. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of these kinds of videos in my feed about people with no direction who are failing in life. These are people who are depressed, lonely, have no friends, or have never been in a relationship. And these videos are getting a lot of views. This one's called, I'm a 33-year-old woman with no life. My advice to young women. And it has over 1 million views on it. Though you probably shouldn't take advice from someone who just spent 10 minutes telling you that they're a failure. This one here also has over a million views. And here's one with 6 million. The more interesting part of this phenomenon is that none of these people talking about their experiences are big creators. All of them come from small channels of people who had like 5 viewers prior, and these videos are still blowing up, which unfortunately, probably means that a lot of people strongly connect to this message. But what's really frustrating is that while the creators of these videos that I'm showing aren't really pessimistic, there's a pretty sizable portion of people online who are failing in life and spend a lot more time blaming society or other people for their problems, than they do working on themselves. They also create these really negative philosophies and victimize themselves to garner sympathy from others and justify their position in life instead of actually making changes. And it's really kind of annoying. Probably the most recent public example of this is from the documentary on Boogie2988 where he says he wants to make things better and he wants to change his life, but when he tries to get a job, you can see him sabotaging himself by saying a bunch of things that make him unemployable as a way to get the recruiter to feel bad for him. I am disabled. The, the downside to that is I am extremely depressed. So there's some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, uh, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. I'm also a felon. What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. I did work in the porn industry for the better part of seven years, so uh, I mean... Be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? So because there are a lot of self-sabotaging victims who are in internet comment sections or on Reddit complaining about how the world is against them and there's nothing they can do, for those who are willing to listen, let's talk about some of the very identifiable reasons that these people aren't doing well Starting with this girl, Akuto, who can't find a job. When I was in college, I studied video production. I studied um, basically a very interesting version of journalism. And I wasn't, I didn't know I wanted to be in journalism, but um, I knew for sure that I didn't want to tell like sad stories. So I didn't really aim to do journalism, but that's what basically my major was. There are only a handful of degrees that are worth getting in college, and journalism is not one of them. Maybe back in the 90s it was, but she's 33, so she would have been in college around 2008 when internet blogs were prominent, so this probably was the worst time to spend a bunch of money on a degree, considering that if you had the drive to practice on your own to get good enough at writing to be worth hiring, then you likely could have just published your own stuff or made a YouTube channel. She also indicated that she didn't really like her major, which is a big sign that she should have picked something else or not gone to college. I, I graduated college, I got an internship, this is life is gonna be good life is gonna be good and then i never got jobs <laughs> now one could argue that she went to college to learn stuff but considering that they didn't teach her enough about writing to be employable the courses probably weren't very good i applied for you know companies like brick buzzfeed yahoo like all their like fun media department jobs i applied for them Nobody. Video. I applied for video editing jobs. Nobody. More proof she didn't need that degree. These days, maybe the only argument for not just learning how to write on your own is that in college, you can be taught and be held to a code of ethics that a journalist is supposed to have. However, in 2015, when she graduated, any random blog had more journalistic integrity than BuzzFeed. Oh God, doing the math on that, she burned a seven-year period of her life on a degree that led to no money. Everybody, you need to assess if college is actually right for you. Don't just go because you were told to. It's very easy to do market research and make sure a degree is actually worth it. And don't forget that trade schools take way less time and lead to a lot of good paying jobs. I never, I had a few interviews, but I never got jobs. I never got jobs. And it just, 
never, nobody wanted to hire me. Nobody wanted to give me opportunities. Nobody wanted, I, I don't know if they thought I was too dumb to do the work. They kept, the thing I kept getting was, uh, this is literally what I keep getting today in my 33 years is you don't have enough experience. You don't know what you're doing, so we can't hire you. But it's like, well, how am I gonna get experience if I don't, if you don't hire me? And that's still the struggle today. So this is the part that gets frustrating for me. And you'll see this trait in a lot of people who are in a bad position later on in life. They literally told you why you didn't get the job. They've been telling you for years and you aren't listening. They said, you don't have enough experience and you don't know what you're doing, so we can't hire you. You don't need to work at BuzzFeed to practice writing articles. You don't need a job at Sony to learn video editing. You can practice this stuff on YouTube or Substack without talking to a hiring manager. I mean, you're 33 and you graduated how long ago? You've had almost a decade to practice these skills, so you should be an expert by now, yet you're having trouble getting entry-level positions. Why aren't you working on your marketable skills? Now, I haven't seen anything she's written, but she did mention that she interviewed for video editing jobs. I've watched a number of her videos, and there's barely any editing in them. The most complex thing I've seen her do is this YouTube subscribe button that is probably just a pre-rendered effect that someone else made. So all she had to do was spend five seconds dragging it onto her timeline. Most of her videos contain zero editing, except for a title card, and maybe every so often she'll flash something on screen that she recorded in OBS, or put up a borderless image with no interesting effects on it. This is stuff that any beginner editor can do. These jobs on the low end where she lives in California go for about fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year. Why would someone pay a beginner fifty to sixty K for a skill set they can learn in a few hours? If you want a career, you have to build skill first. And there have been plenty of opportunities that this girl Akudo could have utilized to practice over the last fifteen years, like editing Twitch highlights for a random channel for free. Now she wants to be a YouTuber because one video did well, but unless she practices creator skills, she won't succeed at that either. Anybody can say their opinion in front of a camera. The reason people get paid to say their opinion is because they're good at saying it in a way that catches people's attention. If you don't know how to do that, you won't succeed at content creation. So one of the issues that is causing people to be depressed or lonely is that they simply haven't built any useful or marketable skills. However, that's not the only issue. The biggest issue I see with people who are depressed and lonely is that pretty much all of them have no idea how to present themselves. A lot of the time I think of myself as ugly and I don't think that that's a bad thing. A lot of the time it's just something that I can accept and be cool with and get on and I can just be okay with it. You don't have to accept being ugly. One thing that I've learned over the years is that most people are reasonably attractive or they're at least attractive enough to get what they want. There are very few helpless cases that can't be fixed with some fashion advice, provided that you didn't destroy your body with morbid obesity. Outside of that, in my opinion, if you think you're ugly, there's a 90% chance that you actually aren't. First and foremost, just shower. Literally, just shower. Okay, so I'm a mess right now, and I was actually going to shower, even though it's almost 3 o'clock, but the water was all cold, so... No luck. Yeah, I can tell. Now, I know there's like an incel meme out there of them getting mad because people told them to fix their appearance by showering, but literally, just showering would up this girl's appearance by three points if we're talking about a 1 to 10 scale. She looks like a wet dog here with her hair oily and flat to her head. This doesn't look good, and it throws off the entire proportion of her face. Speaking of showering, check out Reed Street Soap to find the best smelling soaps. One of the worst things you can do for your appearance is smell bad. No matter how good you look, People will not want to be around you if you smell like crap. Fortunately, Reed Street has you covered with their wood shop and oak moss soaps for the guys, or for the girls, try the Cosmic Forest soaps. Oak moss is my new favorite though. Also, don't forget to check out the candles. This gingerbread one is addictive. The best part is that not only do these items smell fantastic and use high quality ingredients, but the owner Michelle spends a lot of time making sure they visually look good, so they work great as gifts. Check out Reed Street Soap by clicking on the first link in the description. Alright, outside of purchasing quality soap, if you smell bad, then I recommend using baking soda to clean all the areas that smell, like your armpits. Have you ever showered and still smelled BO on you even though you use soap? Baking soda will fix that. Baking soda first, and then soap everything down to give yourself a good fragrance. You can also brush your tongue with baking soda if you have bad breath. However, don't use it to brush your teeth. 
But I'm mentioning this because all types of people underestimate how much smelling good matters. Smelling bad can easily change a 9 out of 10 to a 3 out of 10. On the flip side, if you smell good, that will improve your number. Anyway, back to Kara. Just like a lot of overweight people don't want to be told that they're not fat, I don't want to be told that I'm not ugly. I don't want to call myself unconventionally pretty. I am happy a lot of the time to think of myself as ugly. Cope. Nobody wants to be seen as ugly. Stop lying to yourself. Just admit you care so you can start fixing the problem. Recently, I read a book called The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt, and there were a lot of really interesting studies in there about psychology. In one of them, done by Mark Leary in 2004, they wanted to see how much people cared about what other people think of them. So they took people who said they didn't care about what others thought of them and tested them against people who said they did. Each person was isolated, put in a room, and was told to talk about themselves for five minutes. While they were talking, the researchers flashed a number that would let the subjects know how much a person in another room wanted to interact with them in the next part of the study. A high number was good, a low number was bad. Except, the numbers were fixed by the researchers, so it didn't matter how interesting the test subject was. They increased or decreased the number to watch the speaker's responses. The funny part is that everybody cared what people thought about them and suffered a self-esteem drop when the numbers were low. So stop lying to yourself. You do care about what others think of you, and the second you realize that is the second you can start working towards getting more of what you want. I think the actual reason that Kara doesn't want to be told that she isn't ugly is because it points out how little work she puts into her appearance. Which means, if people call her pretty, they're actually calling her lazy for not doing self-care. I never want to get into this place where I feel like what I look like is more important than what I do. Being beautiful is not an accomplishment, and being ugly doesn't have to stop you from making accomplishments. Yeah, that's what everyone who doesn't take care of their appearance says, because they have no idea how much work goes into being attractive. Probably the easiest way to show the amount of work required is to talk about how much time guys have to spend in the gym to look good, which is not even the full story because it doesn't count all the research that goes into learning how to lift properly or how to bulk and cut properly. Just those things are many hours per week and months or years of research and technique practice. Since in terms of appearance, the gym is largely optional for women, the female equivalent to the gym will be learning how to work with and take care of their hair, especially if it's long. But people who don't take care of their appearance have very little respect for the time and effort that people who do take care of their appearance put in. And that's why people who don't work on their appearance don't get the attention. Unless you're like a really rich guy because some girls will accept that, don't expect to get a person who takes care of their looks when you don't. For more information on the basics of being attractive, you can watch this video that I did here at the 19 minute mark. I talked about the show My Mad Fat Diary the other day, but basically that show is just this grand statement and a work of art showing that you can be fat or you can be ugly or you can be whatever it is that you are and you can still live and do the things that you want to do. And that means a lot to me. I don't think that we get that message enough. Ultimately, feeling beautiful or feeling ugly can feel like the same thing as long as you don't feel like either one of them has to get in the way of what you can do and of who you can be because they shouldn't and they don't. But it does get in the way though. People are very superficial and not working on your appearance will make it harder to make friends, it will make it more difficult to get a good job, and it will make it very difficult, if not impossible for some, to find a relationship partner. You can take inspiration from the fat acceptance movement and gaslight yourself as much as you want about how your appearance doesn't matter, but that doesn't change reality, especially in relationships. People don't have a value, they have a perceived value and everyone perceives it differently, and how attractive you are is the average of how you are perceived. Some people are just delusional. You can say you're a 10 until you believe it, but you cannot say you're a 10 until I believe it. With that said, our friend Kara has another video on her channel, and what we see might come as a surprise. I feel like a monster right now who has just come out of hibernation. I have spent six or seven hours today lying in bed, in pain. Wow, look at that. Ignore what she said, I'll get to that later. Instead, remember how I talked about the importance of showering and washing your hair? This is what it looks like when someone doesn't shower. This is what showering looks like. No shower, shower. No shower, shower. She looks way better here in the video where she showered. There are other self-care things she can do to look better like reshaping her eyebrows, but this is a big improvement. Now, if you investigate further, 
When someone extensively doesn't take care of their appearance or has major life problems like the ones being discussed in this video, typically depression is a factor. I'm not like a board-certified health professional, so it would be immoral for me to diagnose any of these people with a mental illness. Even Dr. K, who is a licensed psychiatrist, won't diagnose someone over an internet video. You know, it's not my place to do a diagnostic assessment of you and say that you are or aren't mentally ill. That being the case, it would be great if all the amateur internet therapists would stop diagnosing their opponents with mental disorders as a way of making themselves seem superior, but I digress. I won't say these people have any specific disorders. However, I will point out what appears to be obvious to me, which is that when someone says they're depressed or they're diagnosed as depressed by a health professional, they tend to have a very good reason for being depressed. It's typically not random. But don't take my word for it. Here's Jordan Peterson saying it. So, and that's partly what I guide you through in the, in the future authoring program, too, because it asks you to consider what I think are the main six dimensions of your life. You know, and so one of the things I do when a client comes is I just do a rough walkthrough of those dimensions. It's like, does anybody care if you're alive or dead? You know, so do you have any friends? Do you have anybody that loves you? Do you have an intimate relationship? How are things going with your family? Do you have a job? Are you as educated as you are intelligent? Do you have any room for advancement in the future? Do you do anything interesting outside of your job? And if the answer to all those is no, it's like, you're not depressed, my friend. You just are screwed. That girl from earlier, Akuto, had a family that was so toxic that she had to excommunicate herself from them. Myra West, who made the No Friends video that I flashed on screen briefly at the beginning, also had a very toxic family that she no longer speaks to. Now, I don't know Kara's full backstory, but she does have problems. So basically, all my life, at least since I was pretty young, I have gotten headaches and migraines now and then, and so I'm kind of used to it, but over the past few months, they have gotten really bad and, like, very regular. A couple months ago, when after I'd had like three really bad migraines, three days in a row, on the third day of waking up with a migraine, I was hollow, and it had been a long time since I had felt that low of energy and that depressed. I'm not exactly sure what is triggering the migraines, and yes, I have tried to figure out it might be my room. It's possible that my room is full of deadly virus migraine-giving things. Yeah, that sucks. I don't have migraines myself, but a number of people in my life have had them, and they essentially disable you, but in the worst way. Not only can you not get up and do things when you have a migraine, but any stimulation tends to make it worse, so you can't, like, watch TV or listen to something to pass the time. A lot of times you also can't sleep, so you just have to stay awake in pain and stare at the wall for hours. Anyone would be depressed if they had to deal with that on a regular basis, but I've seen enough people with migraines to know that outside of medical intervention when necessary, Migraines are all about prevention, and you can actually get so good at preventing them that they basically never happen. I won't go into full detail, but since we're talking about things like style and fashion, and how to make things like a living space look more attractive, I will start out by saying that I would never guess that a girl lives in this room because there are no decorations along with very bright, cool tone overhead lighting. That's not the only thing that will cause migraines, but bright overhead lights are a big one. Get a floor lamp with a shade or a filter over it to soften up the light, and change the light color to soft white instead of daylight. Not only will this make your living space more enjoyable to be in because it's more enjoyable to be in an attractive space, but it will also cut down on your head pain. Do not use recessed lighting or overhead LED lights if you have migraines. Better yet, get some color changing bulbs. Those are great for making a room look better and making it so you can easily pick a light color that won't hurt your head. I really love color changing lights and they really up your mood whether you get migraines or not. Outside of that, I'm not going to go on a full migraine prevention rant because it's not super relevant to the channel, but if you do have migraines, I will put up a list on screen that talks about all the things I've found that prevent migraines. Hopefully this will help people who struggle with head pain. Shifting gears a bit, let's talk about male loneliness. Recently, a video talking about men's issues by Shoe on Head went viral because she said things like this. Men are not just lonely when it comes to dating, they're lonely when it comes to friendship too. This is something that I see a lot when viewers send me messages. I commonly get people saying that not only have they never been in a relationship, but they also have no friends or very few people around them at all. Shiwon Head then goes on to point out all the hostile positions towards men that a lot of people on the left have by showing some Twitter comments. The reason young men flock to alt-right MRA movements is because the left gives brain-dead advice to young men. We need to be more compassionate to them. 
for our own sake. I'm sorry, but how is respect women brain-dead advice? What advice? Don't rape? Don't be a rapist is bad advice? Help, I have no friends or community. I feel suicidal. Um, have you considered not raping? Here's my actual advice I would give to my teen boys as a leftist. One, always get enthusiastic consent. Two, save the planet. Three, don't say that. It's actually kind of racist. Like, what the f is this? How does this address men and their issues? It doesn't. Why does their advice always seem to be, become a liberal? Hey men, here's how to fix all your problems. Agree with me politically. Yeah, it's a pretty big turnoff when you say that you have a problem, and someone tries to use that feeling of hopelessness or insecurity to indoctrinate you into their cult instead of actually trying to help you. It's so funny how men feel entitled to a girlfriend. No, you sexist freak. When one side is like, wanting a girlfriend is sexist entitlement, and the other side is like, here's how to get a girlfriend. I don't, I don't know, bro. Though to be fair, I think both woke leftists and red pill guys give trash advice when it comes to healthy relationships, Destiny being the latest victim of, being able to cheat is so cool, until somebody finds someone they like more than you. Even if the red pill guys are saying that only men can cheat, which is called an abusive relationship, by the way, a woman would have to be an idiot to stay with and reproduce with a guy who openly tells her that he thinks cheating is okay. It's so weird that red pill bros will make fun of women for being with guys like that, but also say, I should get to be a guy like that because of evolutionary biology. Rules. Exactly. Rules. Without them, we live with the animals. Anyway, these days, there are a lot of men who are lonely and depressed. I've watched a number of videos made by such men, but the one that stood out to me the most was this one by a YouTuber who goes by Mr. Gaming Guitarist, or Jaren. Jaren has been on YouTube since 2010, and in the last couple of years, he's made a number of videos documenting his depression and his life issues. This next clip is from a video called I'm 27 and I feel lonely all the time. Hi, everyone. It's me, Mr. Gaming Guitarist. And I'm here yet again recording another video talking about how I feel like shit yet again and it's a constant struggle a constant pain in the ass but this but making videos like this feels like it's the only way to get things off my chest so that's why I continue to do them wow that is the voice of defeat he sounds like he barely has the motivation to wake up, so good for him for actually doing that and working a job and driving some Uber. But after watching all these videos, this essentially is how they go. A guy with a very apathetic voice turns on a camera, says he's depressed, and uses YouTube as a therapy session because they have no other method of voicing their issues. I wanted to make this video because I feel lonely all the fucking time. And I don't know how to deal with it. There's no one else to complain to other than this camera. Because I don't want to bother my, my, the, you know, I don't want to bother my two best friends, you know, burden them with this information. And, you know, there is no family that I can talk to that will understand this shit. And because the only family that talks to me is my, uh, is my aunt, but, you know, she's 70, she's from the Philippines, I can't connect with her. She can't, she doesn't understand this stuff when I try to explain all of it. And so even though I'm not technically alone, I just feel lonely all the goddamn time. And any time I try to make attempts to get out there and socialize, try to make new friends, try to, you know, expand my social circle. I can't do it. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel like that. Either they're in a position where no one's around, or they have trouble appearing vulnerable in front of people who are close to them, so they hide their issues. Honestly, I don't know what kind of people these friends are, but if they're close friends of yours, you'll probably find out that they're a lot more willing to listen and help than you think. You're just afraid to ask. But that's not the only thing bothering Jaren. Here's him responding to comments on a prior video. On one video I made a while ago where someone said, this handkerchief is cringy as fuck. And then there was another comment on that video. The hell was it? Someone said, 
it was, oh yeah, that's right, it was the video of me talking about how I can never find a girlfriend in, I think that was maybe one or two months ago, but anyways, the, I, the other thing that really set me off was there was a video, sorry, a comment in there that said, it, it's not because of your looks, and then someone replied to that comment that said, yes, it is, and that made me think for the first time that I was fucking ugly. I agree with the guy who replied, Jaron, it is because of your looks. Looks are important in every kind of relationship, and when you show up on camera looking like that girl Kara who didn't shower, then women aren't going to find you attractive, and they aren't going to respond to you well. However, I don't think that Jaron is ugly. I think Jaron is the perfect example of someone who could be 3 to 5 points higher on a scale of 1 to 10 if he just took better care of his looks. The first thing that stands out about Jaron is how bad his hair is. It looks like he doesn't shower or comb it. Now, I'm not going to show it because that seems malicious, but I will say that it looks like his hairline is thinning on the top, so just as an announcement to all the guys who have that issue, protect your hairline. If you still have hair, then you still have time. You can prevent hair loss, but once you lose it, you probably won't get it back, and balding will heavily lower how attractive you are to women. See a dermatologist and work out a plan. Most of the prevention products aren't very expensive. You can also stop using name brand shampoos because a number of them have lawsuits against them for putting chemicals in their products that cause balding. Check out rosemary water, don't drink alcohol, filter your water, especially if you live anywhere near farmlands, and don't wash your hair every day. I will also say that Jaren's thinning isn't that bad, so if he takes action now, he'll likely be fine. Now that the medical issues have been addressed, Jaren needs to shower and comb his hair and shave that peach fuzz he has. As an example of how much of a difference those small changes would make, here's another YouTuber who does plastic surgery that has a similar look to Jaren, and his hair looks better simply because he combs it. Now when it comes to actually styling his hair, Jaren has a lot of forehead space, so one of the things he can do to look good is use his hair to cover his forehead, which will balance out his face. Again, I will point out that Jaren is not actually ugly. He's just terrible at fashion. Earlier, I said that he's been on YouTube for over a decade, and because of that, we have a video of Jaron as a younger guy. Not every video is like this, but in this particular video, he happened to dress pretty well, probably by accident. Yes, this is the same person. This is Jaron from 13 years ago, when he was in high school. But you can see in this video that he uses his hair to cover his forehead, and it looks way better. This also allows him to wear smaller glasses, and even though they're kind of plain, they are way more fashionable than the science lab goggles that he's wearing in the loneliness video. His shirt looks decent here as well, but I think a turtleneck would fit better than the mock neck that he's wearing. Oh, and he's thin here too, so obviously that makes him look better. But that's not all. Something that I haven't gone over in fashion yet are what are called essences. An essence is basically what physical archetype you are, and it gives you more information on what kinds of clothes would look best on you. If you want to get a little overview on essences for men, you can watch this video here, but I will warn you that essences are not as well established for men as they are for women, so it will be a little difficult to research. Everyone is a combination of multiple essences, but you want to start with your primary essence, which is what people notice about you first. Jaren's primary essence is gamine, which means he looks very youthful slash boyish. You can see that more easily in his videos from high school, which means that in terms of fashion, he would look good in the same kinds of clothes that someone like Tom Holland wears. Though since Jaren is into rock music, he might want to dress more like a YouTuber named Justin Wang, who has very similar features. Justin knows how to dress, so Jaren can simply just copy him. Justin balances out his forehead space by pulling his hair up, which is an alternative to using his hair to cover it. With that said, Jaren, you look like crap in this video, but you aren't ugly. You don't take care of your appearance, and that's a part of the reason why you're having issues with women and with making friends. Speaking of, in a different video, Jaren talks about his troubles with rejection. It's probably not very fucking obvious just by looking at me, but I'm 27 years old, never kissed a girl on the lips before, which of course means I'm a fucking virgin, which of course means I've never had a girlfriend before, never dated anyone before it hurts me a lot on the inside at this point you know once you know the average american turns 27 years old they should have at the very fucking least have had at least one fucking kiss on the lips with a 
with a with a, with a girl they like this one thing feels like it's ho it's holding me back in life cuz it makes me feel a lot lesser than other people the second reason he's having trouble with women and this is very common in the incel community is that he describes women as sexual favors instead of as a person. Pay attention to the wording. He doesn't say, I've never experienced a loving relationship with another person. He says, I've never been kissed. I've never had sex. A lot of guys who have never been in a relationship have trouble seeing women as people simply because of lack of exposure, and that turns women off. Just like it would be a turnoff if you as a guy were seen as a wallet. And I mean, yeah, there are guys who get away with treating women like objects, but those are 8s, 9s, and 10s. That's why women accept them. Also, presumably you want a healthy relationship, and those guys don't have healthy relationships, so he needs to treat women like people. That will change how he interacts with them, and primarily, he'll stop putting them on some unachievable pedestal, and instead, see them as a person who has their own thoughts, desires, and insecurities. And believe me, this is not for lack of trying, because I have been able to get different girls' phone numbers, you know, I've gotten at least fucking 10 or 20 different phone numbers where I see a pretty girl when I'm out in public and then I just talk to her, say, hi, my name's Jaren, how are you? And then, you know, have a good conversation. And then I try, and then, you know, I, we, and then, you know, we exchange phone numbers and then that's the last I ever hear from them. I mean, if they're giving you their number, it means that you're at least good enough at conversation to get to that point. Half the numbers are probably fake, but they aren't outright rejecting you. I don't have any reason to believe that Jaren is misrepresenting this in an extreme way. I've watched a bunch of his videos, and he seems pretty decent conversationally. It really just goes back to not seeing women as people, and it takes some real audacity to approach a girl who takes care of her appearance enough for you to call her pretty, and speak to her looking like you haven't showered in a week. Because it's like my face just kind of looks like repellent. For pretty girls, I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway, next Jaren talks about a girl he approached at a bar who gave him her number, or a fake number. Some time passes. She doesn't respond to texts, but he sees her again at the bar on a different day. Jaren does something stupid and approaches her to say hi when she obviously is not interested, so a different guy steps in to get Jaren away from her. Then this rant ensues. He's fucking shoving me. He's shoving me, and then he says, leave her alone. All I said was one fucking sentence. And then he's, and pretty, I just snapped, all right? And I, and this is what I said. I said, you know what the difference is between guys like you and guys like me? Guys like me will treat her like a human being, and guys like you will treat her like a disposable, uh, fuck me, disposable pleasures. No, you wouldn't. You described women as kisses and sex. A lot of the air quote nice guys don't realize this, but they're the same type of guy as the ones they don't like. The only difference is the guy he's criticizing is attractive to women. If they had the chance, they would treat women with a similar amount of apathy. After this moment, Jaron goes into a really intense story where he talks about losing a girl he was friend zoned by after he said he liked her. This was a pivotal moment for him because he almost ended his life afterwards and he really opens up about how bad his depression is during this part of the video. So I'll say it like I said with the other people. Jaren has very good reasons for being depressed. This is not just random, and I don't think it's genetic either. He's gone through some stuff. There's a reason why his life is the way it is. His dad died when he was 14, likely from obesity issues because he was 600 pounds. His mom had a stroke a few years ago, which rendered her unable to speak or walk, which is incredibly sad, and it was hard to hear when I listened to it. Worse, he tried to get government assistance because he's broke and taking care of a stroke victim is expensive, but the government responded by hauling her away to some facility that was so far away that he couldn't see her. And then, they proceeded to steal his childhood home from him. I don't understand the full timeline, but as I'm aware, he hasn't seen his mom since, which was several years ago. I don't know if she's still alive, and I don't know if he was able to get the house back, but currently, he's not homeless. As I said, jaron has been through some real stuff. There's a reason he has issues with depression. However, I think if you address the main ones, which would be to give him some career success, find him more friends, and find him a relationship, his problems with depression and mental health would largely go away. He would be a completely different person. Now, he would still have to deal with his traumatic life experiences in therapy, 
but those issues of dealing with loss would be way easier to handle if other stuff was taken care of. A lot of mental issues are created by a pileup of many different problems being added together. If you can get rid of some of them, your life will be way easier to manage. The good news is that this video was made a couple years ago, and Jaron has a little update. Here he is talking at 29. Hey, everyone. It's me, Mr. Gaming Guitarist. So I wanted to make this video because I've been live streaming a lot more often lately, and I keep getting asked the same question so many times. People keep asking me, hey, do you have a girlfriend yet? And my answer to that is no. But I already know how far I've come because you can tell I can say that with a smile on my face and I'm okay with that. Wow, his voice is way different and way more relaxed. I will also add a side note now that I've seen other videos of his, like this recent one of him shaving. I don't know why he did that because if he just styled his facial hair, it would look pretty good. But he's definitely gone through some changes in these past two years. Ever since that video happened, I really made a conscious effort to start meditating. That has made the single biggest difference in my mental health way more than any of the antidepressant medication ever did for me. Meditation and a couple of Dr. K videos fixed a lot of his problems. It's impressive how much progress he's made just based on what he's saying and how he sounds. I'm sure at this point, he has a lot more perspective on his mentality from the prior two videos. He still has issues, but he looks like he's handling his life way better than before. However, as far as I'm aware, he still doesn't have an actual job. That's all I wanted is I wanted to be a musician and I wanted to be able to talk about entertainment for a living. I wanted to be able to, what, to make videos on YouTube talking about all my favorite stuff. Here's the unfortunate end to this story. Looking at Jaren's channel, it's been a bunch of years and he still isn't successful at YouTube. The outlook is not good. His only videos that perform well are ones where he's getting sympathy views. At this rate, he probably will never be able to do YouTube for a living. However, after watching a ton of his videos, I do think he has a lot of potential to be successful as a content creator. But he needs a mentor. I don't really do this that often because when I gave my advice freely to everyone, the vast majority of people took hours of my time and did absolutely nothing with it. Most people were like Boogie2988 and didn't actually want to put in the hard work that it takes to succeed at YouTube. It's, it's hard, hard to get him to focus on that. Trajectory. It's hard to get him to focus on that. I um, yeah. I haven't really said this publicly, but I I was at Boogie's house just a few weeks ago. I was trying to get him to like make just like you know normal content about games and stuff. And when he posted it, he was like, "Oh, that was a good idea. You maybe post a video about the Danis fight. It's like a three out of ten. Like that was a good idea." And I was like, "Yeah, you should do that every day." But for some reason, like. Nick, Nick, you and I have talked about this. There seems to be this like lol cow gene where no matter how much good yeah. advice you give one of these people, they refuse to take it and actually better them, you know, better themselves. So yeah, a lot of people have wasted my time. So these days I'm picky about who I help. However, Jaron looks like a person who would do well with some coaching. So open call. Jaron, if you see this, send me a message and I'll help you with YouTube. With the right direction, you could easily go from 13K subs to 50 to 100,000 subs in one year. Based on what Jaron said in that last video, I think he knows this next thing conceptually, but I'm going to say it anyway because there are other people who don't, and a lot of people think that things will just get better if they wait. Certainly time can help, but if you aren't actually putting work in, then life is very content with leaving you in the exact same place, except now you're 20 years older. And for an example of that, we have Defying Odds Donnelly, who is in his late 40s and has no friends. This next clip, is from a video called Being Ugly and Having No Friends at 46 from over two years ago. What do I mean by being ugly? Being ugly is more than just about looks. It can be about personality, how you behave around other, uh, behave around other people, um, your sense of humor. And so, obviously, it would be logical to reason that the reason why I have no friends, people who I can call up on, have a conversation with, wing, uh, find someone to win, willingly hang out with me, is probably safe to say because there is something ugly about who I am. Much like the others, I don't think he's ugly. 
He just really doesn't know how to present himself. For example, he filmed this video in a Where's Waldo t-shirt. Terrible fashion choice. His lighting is awful, and the only wall decorations he has are a thermostat, a light switch, and what looks like a speaker for a doorbell. This guy has no style. Put a picture on the wall. Put like a little statue or something on that railing back there. Put some nice curtains on that window on the left. Breathe some life into this home. He's also doing that upward camera angle thing, which looks terrible. That being said, I can imagine that a lot of you can guess what's coming next. You gotta admit, it's probably not very common you come across a guy who's close to 50 years old who's never had a girlfriend. This video was shot much later than the previous one. In the Where's Waldo t-shirt video, he's 46. In this one, he's a few months away from 49. But yeah, you can tell by looking at his living space that a woman hasn't been in his life before because there's no art anywhere. And if he wants one, then he should consider learning how to decorate because the bad lighting and the walls with nothing on them is going to creep a girl out. Come on, man. You go to a woman's house, her house be comfortable as shit. Women love comfortable surroundings so men get comfortable surroundings. Most of these people are ugly because they don't know anything about art or presentation. So when they try to get people to be their friends, they come off as weird or creepy. And it's not like this guy doesn't try. He definitely does try. He seems to be very outgoing and is out in public all the time. Uh, I get out there and ski. Obviously, I come across a lot of people when I'm skiing on the mountain. Even during this time, when we're having to like socially distance and whatnot. I'm doing cycling. Uh, and then, of course, before the pandemic, I was doing obstacle course racing, Tough Mudder, Spartans, even going to like post uh, after parties and whatnot. So it was not like I wasn't not putting myself out there. Well, there's your problem right there. You aren't meeting people who are on your level. You've got like goober energy or autistic energy, and you're trying to interact with normal people. You need to find other people who are like you, which is possible. Those people go to Star Trek conventions, board game shops, or play Magic the Gathering. That's where you'll find those people, and every time I've walked by a board game store, or a place that does things like Warhammer 40k, those places are super packed and have lots of events. So either find people who are like you, or fix the things about you that are turning normal people off. The problem is that he knows something's wrong, but he can't figure out what. Obviously what I've been doing is not working, so I need to kind of switch switch the routine a little bit, make myself more neutral, strip myself of any annoyances, and just kind of start from the, from the beginning. Maybe, maybe I can be like an observer, kind of watch how other people interact. What, what are the types of things they say? I can tell you right now what's putting them off. First, on your channel, you call yourself Donnelly. If that's how you introduce yourself, then stop, because that sounds like a child's name. Either go by Donnell or preferably Don. In fact, I'm calling you Don for the rest of the video because that sounds much better. How a name sounds is important. Second, your voice is also very off-putting. You're this really big guy, yet you have this super high vocal register. It doesn't match your frame. You also keep doing this sound every few seconds, and it's kind of annoying. That's probably the easiest thing to fix, though. Last, the way you enunciate and pronounce words is a little weird. It's like you don't know how to make the individual sounds properly with your mouth. Fortunately, this is a very fixable problem, and also fortunately, despite being unemployed, Don is not poor. I think his parents were rich and he got an inheritance, or he had some money saved up from a prior career. That being said, take some of that money that you have and hire a speech therapist or a vocal coach to teach you how to speak properly and more attractively. You have a speech impediment, but you probably could make major progress on this in just a few months. Because I have an ugly persona, it is logical, it is a logical assumption to assume that that's probably why I have no friends. That's probably why I'm a loner. That's probably why I have difficulty finding a good job where I can't even get an interview. I have no network. Absolutely. Being a little weird and not knowing fashion will keep you from getting hired as well as a lot of other stuff. From a physical perspective, Don already hits the gym a lot and is super active, so he's already maxed out in that respect. However, proportionally, Don is always doing the wrong stuff. He has massive shoulders, which is good, women like that. However, the cost of that is that it makes your head look small. When you have these massive shoulders and nothing to balance them out, you end up looking like a Goomba from the 1980s Super Mario Brothers movie. Or at least, that's what I look like when my hair is short, which is why I don't buzz cut my hair like Don does. I'm not an expert on hairstyles, but at the very least, Don needs to grow his hair out a little bit and learn how to style it. This will make his head look less small relative to the rest of his body. The second thing that sticks out to me about Don is that he kind of has a long neck 
and he keeps wearing these tops with low necklines or super low necklines, and it looks weird. Like, these specific tank tops are probably creeping people out. I would stop wearing them if I were him. Fortunately, a lot of times, these guys will make good fashion choices on accident. For example, look at this jacket he's wearing in this video. I hate the color, but the fit with the high open collar looks great on him. Wear stuff with higher necklines like this, and stop wearing those low-cut tank tops. If you want to wear a tank, then wear this type. Like, is it not shocking how much better Don looks with the correct camera angle, the correct top, and lighting that doesn't make him look super pale? Also, the background is beautiful. This looks like a guy who can get a girlfriend, this looks like a guy who's worth hiring, and this looks like a guy who people would want to be friends with. Take this screenshot and use it as your dating profile photo. You're welcome. And by the way, it's not like Don is a loser. There are a lot of things that he does that are very respectable. He's super active and he's doing tons of crazy stuff in his mid to late 40s. He's really in shape. As much as these people appear to have depressing lives, that doesn't mean they can't change them. I think Joe Rogan explained it really well on a podcast he did with Graham Hancock. In all of my the bad experiences and mistakes that I've made, I really wish I didn't make them, mm -hmm. but I did, and they make me who I am today. And, and you learned from them. I learned from them. I understand life better because of mistakes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, people <clears throat> oftentimes dwell on mistakes and think that that defines them. Mm. And it can be a real problem, particularly with young people that are insecure, that have had like some sort of a disastrous thing happen, mm -hmm. like a uh, business failure, being fired, yeah. get, become a drug addict, go to jail, yeah. whatever, whatever it is, yeah. steal something. And then you're defined by the worst mistakes that you've made, yeah. and that becomes you forever. If you're a person who's uh, 35 years old and you feel like, oh my God, how could I fuck this up so bad at 35? I'm such a loser. Yeah. Like, no, this is just what happens yeah. with humans. These are mistakes. Like, yeah. People make mistakes, and you've got to be able to rebound and learn from it, and that's the process of growth, and yeah. that's the only way it gets to you. Right. A few things go wrong, and some people will allow those things to define their entire life as miserable. You don't have to do that. You can actually redefine your entire history by making changes in your life today. It doesn't matter if you're 19, 29, or 49. You still have time. Even in Don's case where he's nearly 50, there's still time to get what he wants. If he stays active and eats healthy, which is something he does, then he still has like 30 to 40 years left, maybe longer. He very well could be just at the halfway point, so why spend the rest of his time in the same lifestyle that he's already tired of? And certainly, if Don still has a chance despite his age and despite his flaws, you in your 20s or 30s have no excuse. The best part is that once you make major life changes that improve your situation, you'll pretty much forget how miserable your past was and you'll instead be focused on how good your life has become. Anyway, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.